What's up guys, Natal Nick here and welcome to a brand new let's play of Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. Now I decided to play this game because we haven't played a Legend of Zelda game since uh, Wind Waker and I was d uh, I was figuring either to play this game or uh, Twilight Princess but I decided to play this game because it was actually the first uh, Zelda game that I've beaten and um yeah I got into Zelda very lately like a couple of years ago and um I got this game on uh, Club Nintendo back when it was still up and um yeah I, there wasn't really any good rewards for the platinum and gold rewards and I just decided to pick up uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX because it was one of the options and um it was definitely worth it it's a great game and um in my opinion it's kind of underrated because of um it's a great game and there's a lot of references to mario characters but yet not many people uh really know about it or uh talk about it that much and it's kind of sad because it's a really great game but yeah, I was uh, thinking about doing uh, Twilight Princess just because it's like near Halloween time and I thought it would be uh, appropriate to do so, but I don't know, I think it's a long game and uh, I don't have the HD version, which would be better, but I don't have that and I don't want to spend $50 or whatever it is to get so when I have the GameCube version. But yeah, I decided to play Link's Awakening. Like I said, it was the first Zelda game that I beat. But anyway, uh, here we have some backstory. What a relief. I thought you'd never wake up. You were tossing and turning. What? Zelda? No, my name is Marin. You must be... You must still be feeling a little woozy. You are on Kuhulin Island. Alright, so let's get out of bed. Let's talk to this guy. Well, Link, you finally snapped out of it. Name's Tarin. Hope you're feeling better. What? How do I know your name? You think it's weird, eh? Well, I saw it on back it on the back of the shield. And we get the shield from him. You got your shield back. Press the button and repel enemies with it. Alright, so, yeah, our first item. And by the way, uh, many people say that this guy is Mario because he looks like him. He loves mushrooms and he actually turned into a raccoon later on in the game. But anyway, um, as I was talking about uh, the Let's Play and everything, we saw a little bit more backstory of uh, Link. He went on. Uh, ship coming back from an adventure or something a uh, crazy storm happened his ship crashed and he came upon this island basically so now we're trying to get our sword back because we have our shield but now we need a sword and there it is right there on the shore also some of the enemies are actually kind of similar to uh, enemies in Kirby as you see right there that spiny urchin enemy looks like uh, um, I forget what its name is in Kirby, but they look exactly like. Hoo hoo! So you are the lad who owns the sword. Now I understand why the monsters are starting to act so violently. A courageous lad has come to wake the windfish. It is said that. You cannot leave the island unless you wake the windfish. You should now go north to the mysterious forest. I will wait for you there. Hoot. So yeah, I kind of know my way around this. And the reason that I didn't really play Legend, uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess is because um, I've never beaten it. And I don't really want to do game blinds. I kind of want to know what I'm doing. 
especially in a Zelda game where there's a lot of puzzles and I probably won't know half of them but um yeah anyway we got our sword it must be yours because it has your name engraved on it all right so now we got a sword and shield and we can adventure forth and I love how the uh, Zelda theme just plays on right when you get your sword But yeah, um, as you saw right there, the uh, spiky urchin enemies gave us a ruby, and it was blue. But that's actually one—that's equivalent to one ruby, even though in most Zelda games, blue rupees are uh, worth five. But here, they're worth one for some reason. But uh, yeah, most people really don't know about this game. They usually know. Uh, Oracle of Ages or Oracle of Seasons because apparently it's better and um but in my opinion I actually like uh Link's Awakening a lot better it might just be because I've played it um and it was my first Zelda game that I've beaten but I don't really know I mean it's a great Zelda game and now after playing a lot more Zelda games I still feel like this is a great game. Hoot. Ho, brave lad, on your quest to wake the dreamer. Welcome to the mysterious woods. Much of mystery you will find on this uncharted Kulin Island. I'm afraid you may find it a trifle difficult to leave the island while the windfish naps. By the by, have you ever visited the Tail Cave, which is south of the village? Go there with the key you find in this forest. The Windfish is watching. Hoot. Alright, so here we are. Mysterious Forest. I guess you could say it's the Lost Woods of this game. But, um, yeah, here we have some Moblins. Not really a big threat. Sometimes they'll throw uh, arrows here and there. But anyway, right here we actually have a power-up. Which is called the Guardian Acorn. And it will reduce our damage by half. But it's only a limited time type of thing. And yeah, it can be annoying sometimes because you hear this annoying jingle. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it can be annoying at some times. But um... The other power up that you will get is the power of Triforce where it increases your attack by 2 and um, yeah both of them can be useful but the music that plays during this power up is kind of annoying. So uh, yeah. Anyway um, as, you, as I told you many times this is the first Zelda game that I've beaten. Well, it's not the first Zelda game that I played. The first Zelda game I played was uh, Skyward Sword. And um, I got that from, like, the library. I borrowed it there. And I've never beaten it. Like, someone else, I guess, wanted it. And I don't really remember um, exactly how it happened. But, like, I guess someone else wanted it. And I didn't have enough time to beat the game. And, uh, yeah. Even though um, Skyward Sword it was a great game. And I guess it made me want to get uh, Link's Awakening even more. Alright, there we got a heart piece, but we can't get it just yet. Alright, here we got those annoying enemies. And alright, this music's really annoying. I'll probably go hit myself a couple times to make it stop. Alright, there we go. Because it can get really annoying. Alright, right here we'll get our first, I guess, official item. Double Double Toil and Trouble. A toadstool mix makes powder for tricks. Okay, so never mind. We actually have to get a mushroom. So, yeah. And, uh, by the way, minor spoiler, but, uh, this entire game is just a dream. So, um, it's kind of like Super Mario Bros. 2, where everything is just a dream. And you find out at the end of the game. 
But, um, yeah, it doesn't really take place in the real world. And it's just, yeah, because this is not Hyrule. This is, as, as you heard, Colin Island or whatever it's called. I don't really know, but it's not really that important. So, yeah. Alright, let's go in this cave right here. See where it leads us to. Alright, so we got a treasure chest right there. Hopefully we can get it. But yeah, um, I was like checking the uh, ratings for this game, and I think it's like it was like a either an eight or a nine somewhere around there. And uh, I checked for uh, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, and this was on IGN, by the way, which isn't that trustworthy of a of a like review website, cause like they rated. Kirby Triple Deluxe with a, I think it was like a 6.5, which is ridiculous because that game is actually very good. But um, they rated Oracle of Season and Oracle of Ages a perfect 10, which is kind of crazy. But you know, I've been playing that game lately, and um, it is kind of good, but it's not like a perfect game. You know, because like I mean, other games that got like perfect tens was like. Um, it was like, uh, Ocarina of Time, um, and that's like all, the only ones I could think of is Ocarina of Time, but like, it's crazy that Ocarina of Time is just as good as Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. But, uh, yeah, anyway... As you guys uh, saw on the title screen, it's called Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX, and that's because the uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening was on the Game Boy, but this is on the Game Boy Color, so yeah, it's a bit better. Alright, so we got the Garden Acorn again, I'm just gonna go hit myself so that I can stop hearing this annoying music. As you saw right there, we're kind of invincible with that Garden Acorn right now. Because these enemies are so weak. Alright, so right there we got the Great Fairy, but we don't really need her. And, um, yeah, in this game you actually can't pick up pots just yet. You actually have to, uh, get, um, a special, like, wristband in order to pick things up. But anyway, right here we got the piece of power, so this will increase our offense by two. And, um,. Yeah, it doesn't really come that useful because you only attack, you're only able to attack, uh, minor enemies. Like, it's not like the power-up will go on and you'll fight a boss or something. Anyway, we found the toadstool that she was talking about, so, uh, oh yeah, we have to show her the item. Forgot about that. So let's go equip it as our shield. Ah, it has the sleepy toad stool. It does well. It does. It does. We'll mix it up. Something in a jiffy. We will. Alright, so I guess time speeding up. It's all ready. It is. Take care as there's not much there. Why not try a bit in my hut? Alright, so we got some magic powder. Try sprinkling it on a variety of things. Alright, so if we sprinkle it right here, it uh, brings fire to this lamp here. Good job. Use it on your enemies and see what happens. If you run out, go to the forest, pick some mushrooms, and I will make you more. Okay, so this enemy uh, right here which um, I bumped into many times you can't attack him with the sword it will just like give you a seizure basically um, if you put magic dust on him he looks like a, uh, he looks like a dick right now but like <laughs> you, you still can't attack him but it says you can actually talk to him you know me I like short names the best so like if I attack him he'll still damage me but you can talk to him for some reason. But yeah, I don't really know 
why that does that, but yeah. I actually forget how to actually kill those things. I don't think you can, though. I think they're invincible. Or maybe you need, like, the boomerang or something. Or, like, arrows. Alright, so now that we have the, uh... The magic powder... We can, um... We have to find... Uh... What was his name? Tarlin or whatever? I forget his name. Alright, there he is. Alright, a rac as a raccoon, my nose is very sensitive to stuff like dust and powder. Alright, so let's put some powder on him. And, uh, like I said before, the, uh... I forget his name already. But Darlin or whatever his name is. Um, he's very similar to Mario, and just like that, he turned into a raccoon, and now he's back to his regular self. So, let's go see what he has to say. The last thing I can remember was biting into a big juicy toad stool. Then I had the darnest dream. I was a raccoon. Yeah. Sounds strange, but it sure was fun. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird that he ate a mushroom when he turned into a raccoon. It should have been, like, a leaf. But, um, yeah, anyway, with that, we got a tail key. And now we can open the tail cave grove or whatever it said. Or, no, it said gate. Alright, so now we got the, ho the owl again. Hoot, take the key and go to the tail cave. Retrieve the instrument that is hidden there. Go now. The windfish is waiting. Hoot. Okay, so now we're gonna go head to our first dungeon already. Already off to a pretty fast start. Which is not bad, but like... It's not like it's gonna be this the entire game. I mean, if you think about it, it's kinda like the same as uh, Ocarina of Time. Where you, uh... Where you like go to the... Um, where you go to the Deku, the great Deku tree inside him, very soon in the game. Alright, so now we have to go around here, to get to the other side, basically. Alright, so is this the right way? Alright, there we go. Gotta go down. Wait, okay, I guess I'm going the wrong way. That's what it looks like. Yeah, okay, so... I don't know where the cave is, but, um... I guess I have to go that way? I kind of forget. But... This is definitely not the right way. As you can tell by... You can't get any further. So, yeah. But we'll be coming back there. I think that's the third dungeon entry. Or second one. It's actually the uh, Moblin base. I remember. Alright, so we can't go this way just yet. Alright, so go gone swamp and mysterious forest. Okay. Um, so I guess we'll keep going through the mysterious forest. Oh yeah, that's right. It's up by the beach. Now I remember. So, by the beach is Tail Cave. Whatever it's called. Yeah, I think it's just called Tail Cave. So, we're gonna go ahead there first. Alright. So, yeah. And by the way, um, another Mario reference right here. Got a chain chomp. His name is Bow Wow. Uh, we'll actually be able to use him later on in the game. Not really that. It's like halfway through the game we get to acquire him, but for a limited time. I think it's actually an item in some game. I forget which game. Oh yeah, no, that's in uh, Hyrule Warriors. In Hyrule Warriors, he's a power glove. It's the golden power glove, I think. For, uh, Link. I'm 
pretty sure. Alright, so where is Tail Cave? Pretty sure it's upwards. Yeah, I don't think it's at the beach area. I think it's upwards. So let's go ahead and go upwards. Alright, let's read the sign. Maybe it'll tell us. Beware sea urchins. Don't touch them with your bare hands. Okay. Alright, so I think we have to go this way. And then we have to go up and maybe to the right. Yeah, I think this is the right way. Alright, I really hate this music, so I'm gonna keep hitting myself, and there we go. Alright, so here's Tail Cave. Let's go put the key in the keyhole. And there we go. Alright, so level one, Tail Cave. So this is our first dungeon. Right here we have these enemies. The only way to kill them is by pushing them off the cliff like that. Alright, so right here we got some enemies. We get a chest, we got the compass. Alright, so... Just telling us what the compass does. And sadly, it does that every time, so it's kind of annoying. It'll be like, this is the compass. It shows you where the treasures are and the keys. Alright, so right here we just push this guy off. Alright, come on. Okay. Well then. Anyway, um, we'll start from right here. It's kind of stupid to have a game over like that. When it just brings you back here. Alright, so with that we got a chest and we got another small key. Alright, so here we have some keys and skeleton guys, which I think are uh, called Gibdos in this game, maybe not, not really sure, but you know, it's not that important to know the enemy's name, unless there's like a quiz, because like some games do have quizzes, like, um, what I'm thinking about doing is actually playing, uh, Legend, uh, not Legend Zelda. Um, I'm thinking about playing Paper Mario Thousand Door once I beat, uh, Mother 3. And that game, there are a couple quizzes that you have to do. Alright, so right here, you have to match all three in order to kill them. Kind of annoying. Alright, nice. Just need this guy. Dang it. Alright, so we're going for clubs, or not. Alright, let's go for clubs again. No. Yeah, these guys are just really annoying. It's basically based off of luck to kill these guys. Yeah, they're just really annoying. Alright, hearts. Of course I don't get it. Alright, whatever, we'll come back to that. And we have that annoying beeping noise. Because we're at low HP, and there we go. Also, when Link dies right there, I always thought he was looked like a cowboy or something. Like he like has his hat down and everything. He just looks like a cowboy. Alright, so let's go kill these guys, open the doors. Alright, so killing that guy, we got a treasure chest. We got 20 rupees. Nice. <sighs> okay, let's go unlock that door after we get rid of that guy right there. 
Okay, so now I think we have to kill all these enemies or I think push a block in order to open that door that's on the other side. I kind of forget. I think it's this block. No? Okay. Is it this block? Nope. Oh no, it's this block. There we go. Alright, so right here, uh, these enemies, you can't uh, kill them with your sword alone. You have to hit them with your shield and kill them like that. Okay, that activated a staircase. And look at that, we got some Goombas here. And you'll see a lot more uh, Zelda enemies like this throughout the game, or Mario enemies um, throughout the game. And it's a really cool Easter egg. I really love how they added Mario characters and uh, in a Zelda game like this. Like, I mean, they do it in other games, too, but this game has the most. Anyway, uh, we got a new item right here, which is called a Rock's Feather. It allows us to jump. And, you know, I mean, that would be very helpful because if we're going to be fighting Mario enemies, we're going to have to have the ability to jump. So, yeah. Now we can go stomp on the Goombas. Or we could use our sword. If you use your sword, you get a rupee, or if you jump on them, you get a heart. So, yeah. Sadly, that's not the case in Mario, where if you step on them, you get a mushroom. And if you, uh, jump on them, or no, if you jump on them, you get a mushroom. And if you, like, kill them with a fireball, you get a coin. But that's not the case. Alright, so right here, we get another small key. And I think that's for this area. No, it's not. Okay, so we have to go up here. Alright, we can now go through here because we have the small key. Let's go get this treasure chest. And we got the nightmare key. So that will... It's basically the boss key. But I guess they call it a nightmare because, again, you're in a dream. So, yeah. But I guess, like, I never really thought about it, but, like, seeing that you're in a dream and getting the nightmare keys, this uh, game could really just be Link facing his fears. But I've never actually thought about that like that. Alright, so let's go jump across here if we can. Alright, there we go. And here we have our first mini boss. And there goes our first mini boss. Okay, um, he was supposed to, like, push back that thing back and forth. Kind of reminds me of Spike from, uh, Super Mario Brothers series, which, again, could be another reference to Super Mario Brothers. But, uh, anyway, I think we're gonna end things here. We uh, got halfway through the first dungeon, and we will get halfway the other half done in the next episode. But anyway, um, I hope you guys will enjoy this Let's Play. But anyway, like I said, thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX right here on Town Bye.